The Fantasy Skirmisher. Hey everyone, this is Nevin. Welcome back to The Fantasy Skirmisher. When I did my unboxing of Burning Banners, which is a Hex Encounter epic war game uh, set in the fantasy land, I had mentioned that I had always wanted a game like that, and I had mentioned specifically Divine Right. And when I went through the unboxing and started looking at the rules, I noticed that the designer of Burning Banners was inspired to make his game because of this game. So no sooner than Burning Banners comes out, then we've got a reprint of this 1979 game by TSR, and it's a faithful recreation of this game, you know, including art and everything else, just with updated components. Uh, so this is published by Pungo Games, and this is a like a division of Worthington Games, uh, which is a war game company. Now, one thing I had noticed that this is a larger game than your typical uh, bookcase war game. So this is uh, 11 and a half by 13 inches. So it's rather tall and stands about two and a half inches uh, wide. So let's um, take a look at the back here. Divine Right. More than just a game, it is a work of fantasy literature in which you, the players, control the destinies of nations. You organize the alliances, seek out the magical treasures, and lead your armies and fleets to battles, sieges, plunder, and if you have been wise, victory. Playable by two to six players in two to six hours. Combining combat, diplomacy, and role-playing into a fast-paced action as each player attempts to build and hold together an alliance of kings long enough to defeat the other players and win the game. The kingdoms of humans, elves, goblins, dwarves, and trolls are pawns in the power games that absolute monarchs play. Ambassadors vie for attention of the kings whose favor they curry. Assassination and backstabbing are popular pastimes and loyal armies may leave your side in the heat of battle at the drop of a hat or a die. The magicians too get their arcane fingers into things and the gods intervene as well. This is a situation which demands skill and luck. So yeah, does that sound epic or what? And so like uh, war games, historical war games, this also has a uh, game complexity scale as well as a solitaire suitability scale. And it looks like it's medium complex and uh, solitaire suitability is also medium, which is a surprise. Sounds like it would be for two or more players. Not sure what the sweet spot is. But let's go ahead and open this up. All right, let's... So one thing I noticed when I have my package delivered is that this thing is very heavy. Drum roll. I do love this artwork. And this is a, well, just speaking of artwork, that's all that is. Pretty nice. Then we've got the rule book. And the rules, let's take a look here. So we have, looks like 33 pages of rules. So which covers introduction, game parts, the basic game, sequence of play, events, diplomacy, sieges, movement, stacking, combat, leaders, victory conditions, special notes, and special notes are for the trolls, the goblins, the dwarves. Has rules for an advanced game, uh, barbarians, lepers, magic, gray staff, temple of kings, and more flying units. And lore of Minaria. Oh, and it is full color, glossy type rules. So you can imagine what these rules look like back in 1979, right? Suggested table layout.
Shireen and its effects on movement. Comes with combat examples. Leader movement bonus. Retreat before combat. The, the death of a non-player monarch. The death or capture of a player monarch. A leader adrift at sea. Here's the special notes for trolls, goblins, and dwarves. Love that old school artwork. Special mercenaries. And some backstory here. The early history of Mineria. The Black Hand, Gem. Which, the dwarves are a race of solitary individuals, so on and so forth. The Eaters of Wisdom, Nuth, which are forced elves. Oh, lots of different races. All right, so I'm going to be looking forward to reading this rule book here. And then we have a second rule book. That is a nice touch. That is a fantastic touch, having two complete sets of rules. And then we've got different tables and charts, random events table, the test of the gods, the wandering people, the leader fate die roll, barbarian recruitment, retreat before combat, and the uh, terrain. And it looks like we've got probably six of these if it's for two to, two to six players. Yeah, got lots of... Uh, Plates, one for everybody. That's lovely. Um, we're just going to set this uh, map aside here because we're going to need to uh, create some space. And then lots of beautiful tokens here. Again, this is the uh, original old school artwork. Got ambassadors with the unique art here. Got shields and swords. I assume that's infantry. Shields and spears. Got different cities. And they all have rounded corners, which is nice. And we've got another counter sheet. Got berserkers and barbarians. Ambassador just looks like a wagon, enchanted castle, a bridge, mist of groping, the reflector, a whirling vote vortex. Lots of different things. The scum. Ghost riders. So I guess that's the uh, role-playing element. And look at those groovy 70s style numbers. And we've got undead. Very nice counters. Again, using the artwork from the 1970s. And then we've got a tray. Fantastic. Let's see if I can open this up. There we go. So we've got a couple of dice. And we have different cards here. Take a look at these first. So these are called identity cards here. The usurper, the shukasm, the muladar, yeah I love this uh, original old school artwork. And then looks like the rest are personalities. Paranoid, glory hound, guilt stricken, elderly, strategist, loyal, deranged, cursed, treacherous, and foolish, hot temper. It just goes on here. It's going to be interesting to see how uh, this game plays. And then I'm going to. Oh, nope, it's. 
coming apart nicely. And then we've got the diplomacy cards as well as, oh, okay, that makes sense, more identity cards. So by identity, meaning the peoples, Zorn, Oh, these look really nice. So I am going to see if I could get a game going next week. I got a little bit of con crud that just started up from a Nova. It was last weekend. So I probably just need to give myself a weekend to rest. And had to do a quick cough there. So these are the diplomacy cards. Enter the Black Knight and the Stubstaff Guards at Stubstaff Keep. Enter the Scum at the Huts of the Scum. Enter Ermoff the Sea Serpent at Serpent's Bay. Enter Ghost Riders of Kos at the Lost City of Kos. And Wandering People, Ogres, Blackmail. Failure of diplomacy may cause temporary, a temporary banishment of the ambassador. So we got some blackmail cards and threats. It looks like these first cards here are like events or something. Just uh, additional units that are maybe neutral who will fight for you. I don't know. We'll find out. Crass bribe. Long oration. With different uh, numbers. And bribes. Black magic. Diplomatic Marriage. Okay. Very cool. And White Magic. So these are the Diplomacy cards. Now let's turn off the camera so I can set up the map. Well, before we set up the uh, map, I just took a quick look at the credits here. And it's got 1979 and 2024 credits. So 1979 Design and Editing, Box Art, Interior Art and Map. Logo type design and uh, development and playtesting. Then 2024, you've got editing, box art, because this uh, box art is different than the original. Uh, I've got 2024 map, 2024 illustrations, production artist, development and playtesting. So kind of cool. All right, now we're going to set up the map. Isn't this map a beauty, huh? Just in its full old school glory. Huts of the Scum, the Thorn Flats. So it looks like there's the Shunned Vale, which is right here. Pluba of the Plain. So it looks like there's cards associated with all these different areas and others could come out based on the counters we saw. We've got the Throws on the Rock, Isle of Fright, the Shining Isle, Balisk. Lots of different uh, locations. Lots of different terrain. Very nice. So I'm really looking forward to uh, digging into the rules. Uh, getting this on the game table and uh, come coming back and reviewing the game for you guys the wasted dead so yeah this kind of really uh, fires me up just because for me it's uh, a bit nostalgic as well even though I've never played the game yeah you know, when it came out in 1979 just the style of uh, old-school artwork just absolutely love it all right so I think we've been a bit spoiled in 2024 because we have course burning banners and now we have divine right so stay tuned we're going to cover more of these games all right thank you for watching the fantasy skirmisher and until next time have a great one don't forget to like and subscribe thanks for watching